task-based lesson design isn't the only option you have for this third project. You could use the 30 minutes in some other way. But I did want to introduce a basic template and a way of thinking about task-based lesson design um, for those of you who would benefit from or desire more guidance in designing a task-based lesson that could be delivered in online format. Basically, there are two different pathways that I could think about for a task, um, a task-based lesson. One is that I want to teach my learners more of a social function. I want to teach the learners the language for accomplishing something. This is really nice because the learners often have buy-in. They want to do something like give compliments or um, bargain prices or make a persuasive argument. Um, but there is also another option where I notice that my learners are struggling with a particular grammatical structure, um, with a particular issue, and so I want to focus more on that language feature. If I was going to do a social or functional task, I think the first question that I would ask is, what do my multilingual learners actually need? What are they going to be using this language, whether English, Chinese, French, Korean? What are they going to be using it for in the future? If I was going to be thinking about it more from a, func a formal perspective, a language form perspective, then I would ask myself, what's a level appropriate language feature that my learners are struggling with? You know, maybe passive or maybe it's forming the right verb conjugations, or maybe it's um, using relative clauses. Um, in a social perspective, I would still want to ask myself, what's the proof? How would the learners prove to me that they have accomplished that, that social function, that task they're trying to do? Um, for the structure-based one, what's a situation in which they would need to use this language in real life? When would learners ever need to use a relative clause? When would learners ever need to use past perfect? When would learners ever need to use comparison adjectives? Um, and then what language resources would they need to accomplish it? Um, in the social functional one, the third question in the structural way would be, what would a tangible outcome of a situation like that be? And the fourth one then, what strategies or planning would they need to accomplish this task? Um, and the fourth and the other one, what other types of language would they need to accomplish this outcome? So you can see in a social functional approach, I'm starting out with what the learners will need to do. And then I'm trying to think about what are the resources, including the language resources that they would need to do it. And the other one, I'm starting out with the language resource. I'm starting out with the form that I want to practice. And then I'm trying to think what are situations that it would make sense to use that form that I want to practice? Um, what could a task built around that look like? So I'll give some examples of what these could look like in real life. So what would multilingual learners like mine actually need to accomplish in the future? Maybe something like use coupons to save money at the supermarket, tell the Chinese or French teacher their hopes for next year's class, uh, writing a letter to the future Chinese teacher or the future French teacher, the future English teacher, give an account to a friend about how racism works differently or similarly in China and France versus in the U.S., or find a roommate for an apartment where one moved out. So these are all things that I could imagine learners like mine needing to do in the target language. So I would, that's the first step, is to pick something like that. Then I would move on to, um, what's the proof? What would be the moment that they were like, okay, they've accomplished this? So I would look at these different um, tasks that I thought my learners might do, and then I would try to think of what would be the moment of proof? What could they do to prove that they can do this? So if the task is to use coupons, maybe a shopping list based on a website with the total amount spent. And these are some tools that I might draw on for that. Uh, tell the new ch Chinese teacher their hopes for next year's class. Maybe they'll prove it via an email, um, which they would send to the real Chinese teacher for the next level. Um, give an account to a friend about how racism works. Uh, they would maybe compose a message, a private Facebook message, um, or maybe like a public message, comparing racism in these two countries, or creating an ad on Craigslist, drafting it, or, uh, you know, mocking up a WhatsApp conversation. So these would be the kinds of proof that prove, okay, they were able to accomplish this task. So this would be sort of the moment of completion or, or the point of the task. Are these information over on the rightmost column? What are the language resources that they would need to accomplish it? Well, you know, you would think about this task, start to analyze, look at it. What, what language would they need? What vocabulary would they need? What grammatical frames would they need? What kind of structures would they need? 
So here I have some examples about the kinds of language structures that might come in handy if these were the tasks. Um, and you obviously want to pick one that's appropriate for the level of the learners you have. And finally, after I've identified the social task, what would be the moment of proof that they've completed it? What are the language structures that they would need in order to complete it? And then what strategies or planning would they need to accomplish it? Um, so this is going to look different for each one, but what would I need to train my learners to do in order to carry out this task? Um, sometimes giving them a little guidebook or a step-by-step -step diagram helps along the way. Um, a task is made up of three parts, a pre-task, a during task, and a post-task. So the during task is the one that's definitely mandatory. Um, and usually this works best if there's some kind of a gap. So you're going to divide the information among the different participants. Either you're giving them different information, or they have different roles, or maybe they're using their different real-life experiences um, as the different information that they have. You're going to need to provide platforms where learners could discover needed information if discovery is part of what they're doing. The task is sort of using the target language to make decisions together. They're somehow using what they each know to come together and to accomplish the task together. Usually it involves a multi-step process and a task requires there being a moment of truth, a moment where they know, aha, okay, we finished it. We did the task. It's done. That that task completion becomes its own assessment. Usually there's also time pressure that the learners know that they don't have forever to do this, that they need to kind of move ahead. Um, and for the groups that are slow or fast, this is always an issue, you can always add some extra steps um, at the end of a task, which the faster groups could get to, but if the slower groups didn't get to them, that's not the end of the world. Sometimes a task will include a surprise turn of events. Um, if you're having learners choose between options A, B, and C, and it's obvious that C is the best choice, maybe surprise them by halfway through the task saying, oh, C is sold out, or C is no longer available. Which of the two then, A or B, is the second best one? Um, so doing something that requires them to use more language or to renegotiate, to reevaluate um, their process. To set them up for a task, you can do a pre-task. This is recommended, it's not required, um, but there's a couple different things that you could do in pre-task um, to identify what the problem is, to teach them the language and strategies, or to have the learners themselves brainstorm language that they know or strategies that they could use. Um, see a recording of expert users doing this thing or, or seeing an example. Um, if it was an uh, email to complain about a broken cell phone, maybe show them a sample email of someone complaining about a broken cell phone that they could analyze and figure out what's part of this. So reminder language lessons, perhaps having learners search a corpus to get examples, or using social media, um, comment sections on YouTube, uh, Twitter, anything like that that would show people carrying out this social function. Assign the task, maybe set up some context a little bit, or brainstorm a process or strategy. Again, this isn't required. This could be done as pre-homework, actually, that the task would be done in class. But brainstorming language, brainstorming strategies, setting a context, setting a reason to carry out the task often makes the task go much better. And then often, usually, there is a post-task after the task is completed. Um, this would be elaboration and, importantly, reflection. Maybe learners think about other possible solutions. Maybe they compare their reasoning with that of another group. And probably the most important thing that you could do in a post-task is if the learners are recording themselves during the task, either they're writing in a Google Doc or submitting an audio recording, having them reflect on that afterwards. Comparing and contrast what they came up with with what others came up with, that's that compares reasoning part, or listening to the recordings, reading their documents, reading chats, transcripts, to try to identify their own language errors, um, give them sort of some language-based assessment on that.